I use a lot of variegated yarns mm -hmm. and let the color changes in the yarn just fall wherever they may and the texture interacts with them and I get something that's a little bit different than what you might be expecting. So, hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm Sarah, your host, and I'm here with my friend Jennifer Courtfeld of Heron Pond Designs. And we're in her beautiful studio, which you can see behind us. Um, and uh, Jennifer, I wanted to talk to you about your, your crafts and all the fine work you do. Um, so how did you get started uh, with your knitting and weaving? Well, I've been knitting since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and mostly doing gifts for the family mm -hmm. um, and knitting for myself, of course. And then I decided that I could not possibly wear all the sweaters that I wanted to knit for myself. So <laughs> Common problem, right? <laughs> um, and I met a friend who lives here in Norwich who dyes her own yarn. Mm -hmm. And she asked me to knit some samples for her. Nice. So I started... A little bit of a side business when I had a full-time job knitting for other people. I was still knitting for myself and mm -hmm. gifts, of course, but then I started doing um, knitting for other people. And that went on for many years, and then I decided to quit my day job and more or less see if I wanted to do this full-time. And so that was in 2010, mm -hmm. and in 2011, I started my business. And yeah. During that gap year, while I was trying to figure things out, I bought myself a rigid, rigid heddle loom mm -hmm. and tried it out. Rigid heddle loom, two cones of yarn, and an instruction <laughs> book. And I brought it home, and I said, I wonder if I like weaving. Yeah. And I wove some dish towels, and I'm like, I love weaving. Yeah. <laughs> and now I have uh -oh. <laughs> uh, four looms, uh -huh. and I weave to sell. Mm -hmm. and I've expanded my knitting clientele, mm -hmm. and along the way, I'd acquired a circular sock machine, so I also make socks to sell, Yeah, and that's the business in a nutshell. Yeah, that's great. Um, tell me a little bit more about some of the weaving patterns you've been working on lately. Oh, um, so I like color mm -hmm. a lot, and... A lot of traditional weaving patterns are, I mean, you can weave whatever you want, but they're typically designed for highlighting the texture in the mm -hmm. weaving. Mm -hmm. But I sort of turn that on its side a little bit because I like to take a textured weaving pattern and weave it in multiple colors so that it sort of bends the rules a little bit mm -hmm. and hides the texture and um, it does things a little bit differently. So I use a lot of variegated yarns mm -hmm. and let the color changes in the yarn just fall wherever they may. And yeah. the texture interacts with them. And I get something that's a little bit different than what you might be expecting. Right. But I'm also knitting, uh, sorry, weaving some fairly traditional designs. Mm -hmm. um, this is a... Bird's eye twill. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, that this is, is not a variegated yarn, so show but a little bit. It um, it's just two shades in a very traditional pattern. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a tencel yarn, which is a little shimmery, mm -hmm. and so it does almost an iridescent yeah. thing. It even looks though, like silk a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They call tencel the poor man's silk mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. And then I've just started working with um, uh, hound's tooth. Mm -hmm. which is a really traditional menswear, um, you know, tweedy, uh, um, you know, suiting kind of pattern. Right. I'm used to seeing this in jackets and things. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm working with a very small scale pattern. I mean, mm -hmm. you, can, you can weave it much so that the little jagged squares are a lot bigger, but mm -hmm. I like the small scale. And yep. then I just did this one in um, berry and purple. So mm -hmm. not quite your traditional colors, <laughs> but the traditional yeah. Um, pattern. Yeah, but it really pops. I love that. It's like a modern a modern take on a traditional thing. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. Yeah. Exactly. And it really feeds nice. my sense of playing with 
bright colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were mentioning how you, you use those um, variegated yarns. You use those in the warp a lot. So you get yes. kind of difference difference across the, the piece. Um, we'll, we'll show some pictures of those too. So yeah, that's great. And you mentioned your sock machine. So that was also another kind of spur of the moment thing. <laughs> um, it was. Um, this was many years ago, actually. My brother was up visiting and we went to a flea market and mm -hmm. he was poking around under a table and he found this box of <laughs> like cast iron stuff. <laughs> What's in he, here? <laughs> he said, this looks like something for knitting. You should mm -hmm. buy this. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember how much it was, but probably like $20 at yeah. the most. Yeah. And they go for thousands now on eBay yeah. to try yeah. to, to try to get one. Um, and I took it home and I did some web searching and stumbled on a woman in Lyme who taught me how to use it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would knit a few pairs for myself or for my family. Mm -hmm. And then I just decided, you know, what if I wanted to sell these? And I started selling socks. And mm -hmm. so um, I crank out socks on a sock machine. And again, lots of color. I, mm -hmm. I do do some solids, but mostly I like very bright, Mm -hmm. variegated yarns um the same local dyer that i worked with um knitting samples nice. dyes sock yarn and what's her, her farm name is that that's ellen's half point farm uh -huh. here in norwich yeah yeah that's great yeah so we've we've had a long standing relationship mm -hmm. getting yarns and right. making stuff collaborating she's d done some custom dyeing for you too yes right? yeah. yes she dyes um one of the yarns i use in the scarves one mm -hmm. of the variegated yarns mm -hmm. and alpaca silk when she dies mm -hmm. and I've worked with her to do custom colors mm -hmm. when I needed them for a client. Right. So you, um, you p pick your own patterns, obviously we've seen, but you also work with people, um, to help them design things for their wardrobe or, or for sure, their taste. Sure. Um, I worked with a friend of mine, um, to design a scarf. She liked the look of one of the scarves I had in stock, but, mm -hmm. um, Almost everything I had was way too long because mm -hmm. she's not very tall mm -hmm. and she didn't want, you know, scarf to the floor <laughs> kind of thing. Right. And she had some, um, she had some color ideas. You know, and so we picked yarns from my stock, but it was a combination that I would not have put together myself. Mm -hmm. And it was really stunning when yeah. it was done. I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a bad choice and it just, it came out beautiful and she loves it. Yeah. So we're able to, you know, meet and I can order yarns if, you know, I don't have what somebody needs in stock. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. It's fun. Yeah. It's nice to have that custom touch available. Um, so know that folks you can contact Jennifer and order up whatever you need to go with your winter coat or, you know, special outfit, that kind of thing. Um, what accomplishments or project are you especially excited about that? over the past year or coming up? Oh, um, design or event or, um, well, I do, um, the craft Vermont show, mm -hmm. which is in Burlington, Vermont. It's the weekend before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And, um, last year I was there for the first time with my scarves and this year I've also juried the socks. Mm -hmm. So I'll have both socks and scarves there. Great. And I'm busy, you know, building up inventory because <laughs> I will do that right up until madly cranking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I will be twisting fringe and sewing on labels. Yeah, the day before. Yep. The yep. day of packing, maybe in the hotel room <laughs> <laughs> the night before. Got Thursday night is a setup day. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, yeah. close a few more sock toes mm -hmm. or you know, sew on a label and yeah, iron a few <laughs> scarves. <laughs> That's how it is when you're a solopreneur, right? <laughs> I, yes. Yeah. Yes. I've heard that term before. <laughs> I like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Um, and what's next? Do you have any big plans for 2018 that you've been thinking about or, you know, new designs? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure. I try not, I try not to throw too many new things in there at once because I want to do 
things well mm -hmm. and I don't I don't want to look too scattered I guess mm -hmm. I mean I'm trying to I've I've had um, some designs that I've woven for scarves I'm phasing out because mm -hmm. they they're they were okay mm -hmm. but they weren't great and I'm ready to move on mm -hmm. so I do want to spend more time exploring the hound's tooth mm -hmm. in the coming year and probably yep. I it does not lend itself to variegated, and I'm totally going to do one in a variegated yarn and see what happens. <laughs> Just for fun. Yeah. Just for fun, yeah. 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 So that 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 will be an interesting experiment. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things I was going to ask, is how, how big of a role does experimentation play in your work? It seems like it, you know, a fair amount. It, it does. Um, what tends to happen is that I'll sit, at the loom mm -hmm. weaving and I've got the loom facing the yarn. So it's almost <laughs> that by the time I've got the project on the loom, mm -hmm. I'm already thinking about what the next one is going to be. And it's mm -hmm. like, Oh, I'm weaving blue now, but that pink is really pretty or, mm -hmm. you know, and some, sometimes I'll just get up and I'll line up four or five cones and it's like, okay, you're next and you're next and you're next mm -hmm. and just do that. And mm -hmm. then, if I see a new color combination that I want to play with, then I will do that. Um, mm -hmm. it, it tends to be spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. It's not, not, maybe not as much planning <laughs> as there ought to be, but um, yeah, whim. Yeah, that's great. And then you do also a fair amount of um, custom knitting for people still. You were mentioning, um, you know, you had that kind of morphed from, doing gifts to doing custom work, but now you do sample knitting and, and other right, things too. Right. I'm, I'm doing sample knitting for a designer, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm very excited about. And, um, I have a steady stream of projects coming from, um, somebody down in the DC area that I've never met, <laughs> but she found me on the internet and I've knit quite a few projects for them over the last few years mm -hmm. and you know it's it's sort of exciting the box shows up on the <laughs> on the doorstep it's like could you please knit this right <laughs> i mean it's not i we've worked together enough that she knows she can just do that i wouldn't mm -hmm. expect most people to just fling something at me and, <laughs> right. and and expect me to say yes but right and in her case she's choosing the pattern and the yarn that she likes and then exactly. just wants you to kind of execute exactly it. you work with clients to kind of help them pick make those decisions too sometimes like, does yes. this sweater look flattering on me or does this color work or do I like yes so, sometimes um it's it's about choosing the right style mm -hmm. or you know somebody will email me and say I want you to knit a sweater and I can't decide between these five things and mm -hmm. so we start well, what do you like about this? And we narrow it down and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's cost. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the yarn might be more than their budget. Um, and sometimes it's just, I can't decide, help me, help <laughs> me decide what I want next. Right. Um, and then color choices. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how people are not confident about what color Mm -hmm. they want sometimes mm -hmm. it's I find that yeah more surprising than you would of, think I found a lot of people have trouble making decisions about color or they're afraid that they're going to pick the wrong color yeah and it's going to make them look ill or tired or something like yep. that or it's yep. not going to match this other thing that they can't quite tell and right whatever so yeah having a kind of a color therapist <laughs> in the mix of the process is yep. is helpful yep. yeah that's great cool um, well, where can our viewers find your work? They, well, my website is heronponddesigns.com and I have an Etsy shop, which, um, will have socks and scarves in it and also an opportunity to do custom orders. So you can initiate mm -hmm. a conversation with me there. Um, I'm on Instagram at heronponddesign, I think. One, one, one of those social medias dropped the S because it's got a character limit, strangely. Yeah. Um, and Twitter, although I almost never tweet. Uh -huh. And Facebook, of course, also Heron Pond Designs. Yeah. So, 
it's pretty consistent. You can find me and yeah. And I, um, my show schedule is on my website and on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I'm always available via email. Great. Well, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you. And thank you guys for being with us today. We'll have all the information in the show notes. And don't forget to click subscribe to find more interviews with Vermont Crafters. <laughs>